In this video, I'm going to share with you the number one thing that will help you improve your daily productivity. I'll also share with you a three-step minimalistic process for getting things done. And then lastly, I will talk about what to write in your journal to make daily productivity a reality. Hi, I'm Scott. I help people use journaling to improve their focus, their productivity, and their mindfulness. Research shows that writing down your experiences with a pen and journal will improve your mental health, which in turn improves your productivity, your focus, and your mindfulness. If you're new to journaling, I have a video on how to get started. I'll add to the end screen of this video. I'll also put a link in the description of this video for a free seven day startup guide to journaling. So let's grab your journal and a pen so we can take some notes and let's get started. I use two books to research this topic and I found that these two books I've come back to year after year, at least every couple of years, I either listen to the audio tape while I'm driving or I'll sit down and just read through a section of the books. Uh, and I would encourage you to do them, to read them also. The first book is Organize Tomorrow Today, and the second book is The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. If you decide to take my recommendation and purchase these books, I have affiliate links in the description of this video that I would like you to use for shopping. When you use my links, I get a few pennies to cover the cost of these videos. Okay, first things first. The number one thing that will help improve your productivity will be what I call battling with resistance. What is resistance, you ask? Well, it's different for everybody. It could be your health. It could be your mood. It could be the weather. It could be another person. It could be really anything that keeps you from doing what you need to do. There's a whole world of productivity research out there. And from what I can tell from all the reading is that it always comes down to your battle with whatever resistance you're facing. That resistance may be getting out of bed in the morning, Recording the video, editing the video, these are the things that I'm struggling with. And research have shown that those who consistently win their battles with resistance are successful. And those who consistently lose their battle with resistance, well, you get the point. Productivity tools and books and systems were all written to try to help you get past resistance. Like if you use Asana or Slack and it has a social element in it where you can post emojis and images and share ideas in a community. These are all things that will help diminish resistance and its effects on you so that you can win your battles more consistently. There's even a comedian named Larry the Cable Guy that says, get her done. Whatever you gotta do, get her done. Believe it or not, in his comedy stand-up skit, he's talking about resistance. Get her done, whatever it is. It's a mental game. Some call it willpower, some call it grit, some make up catchphrases like get her done. It all comes down to the same thing. Anyway, in my experience with something abstract and important like this topic, the best thing to do is to name it, to write it down, and to be honest about it. Your honesty with yourself is really the first step in being more successful. Something else I've experienced is that the greater the resistance, the more important your task probably is. So if it's a term paper back in school, or if it's putting out a new video, or if it's delivering a presentation, the more resistance you experience, the more important that task is to your success. I'll share with you later in this video on what to write in your journal to help you with these battles. Now we're gonna move on to a three-step minimalistic process for getting things done. The first step is starting with the end in mind. This comes from the Seven Habits book. Being able to visualize what it looks like at the end of your work is critical to knowing what to do right now. I mean, really, work is hard. And choosing to work on something that doesn't support the end goal is like boondoggling your time. Boondoggle. Look it up. New word. Have you ever met someone that is overwhelmed with all the things they have to do and they just seem so busy and so frantic all the time? And yet, at the end of the day or the end of the month, they really aren't getting done what they're supposed to get done. This is because they don't have the end in mind. They're not choosing work that is important to do. One way of showing what work is important is by using the urgent important matrix, also known as the Eisenhower matrix. 
You may have seen this before. It's a productivity tool used to prioritize tasks based on their urgency and their importance. Quadrant number one, do these tasks first. They are important and urgent. Quadrant number two, schedule these tasks on your calendar. They are important, but not urgent. And it's advisable to schedule and prioritize these to avoid them from becoming urgent in the future. Quadrant number three, these are the productivity killers. Figure out how to avoid urgent, not important tasks. And finally, quadrant four, not urgent, not important. These should be eliminated. The next step in this system is to write down three important tasks. The book Organized Tomorrow Today shares about the psychology of getting work done. And when we write down what we want to do tomorrow, the important things tomorrow, our brains go into action to support tomorrow's tasks today. Anyway, the most valuable part is being able to write down tomorrow's tasks. Highlight one of those three tasks as the must task. You must not let this one go. The other part of this is organizing tomorrow today. The earlier you do it in the day, the better off you are. If you're able to organize tomorrow before lunch or before your mid-morning break, imagine how much time your brain will have to adjust to this idea that there is a must task tomorrow. So this is a daily thing to do in your journal is to write down three tasks. And the third step in this process is a retrospective. Write down what is working well. I prefer to open this up to all parts of my life. So not just my tasks, but what's working well in my marriage, what's working well in my fitness, my health, my wellness, all the things. The second thing to write down is one thing that could be better. Just one thing. What's working well, you could write paragraphs on, all, make lists of things that are working well. But when it comes to the one thing that could be better, just write down one. Our goal is not to maximize negative thoughts. Our goal is to minimize the negative thoughts, but to walk away with some thing to work on. And the third thing to write down is how you're feeling about your battles with resistance. We're going back to the number one thing. How are you feeling about that? What are the things? Write them down. Maybe free write a paragraph on resistance and, and what are the things that are keeping you from getting done the things that you need to get done. And your best, my best advice is to be honest about it. Be open, be honest in your journal about what is keeping you from getting your work done. Okay, we've covered the number one thing that was important and how to write about it. We covered a three-step minimalistic process on how to get stuff done. Now it's your turn to get your journal out and start working on it. And until next time, we'll see you.